So, factorising quadratics. Not just the simple quadratics like x squared plus 3x plus 2, but quadratics with higher powers, techniques of completing the square and rearranging completed squares in particular into this form, which could be used later to integrate inverse trig functions. Well, just to rattle through these then, so this was 3.3. So if we go to the first one then, we had this a to the 4 plus a squared minus 2. Easy enough, because it is just a quadratic, only it's not a quadratic in a, it's a quadratic in a squared, or specifically in a squared and a constant. So that would just be a squared times a squared, it'd have to be a 1 times a 2, and with a plus in the middle it'd have to be plus the 2 minus the 1. Of course that would go further, because now I've got the difference of two squares. So a minus 1, a plus 1, a squared plus 2. B. 2x to the 4 minus x squared y squared minus y to the 4. Again a quadratic, because I've got these even powers. This time it's a quadratic in x squared and y squared. So it's quadratic on both sides of it. Well the factorisation would be 2x squared times x squared must finish y squared and y squared and the negative will go to the bigger product so it becomes that and once again I've got 2x squared plus y squared and a difference of two squares x minus y, x plus y C <coughs> C was a misprint in the sheets C should have been 6a to the 6 minus a cubed minus 2 still a quadratic only this time a quadratic in a cubed and a constant. So the factorisation is going to be a cubed. A little bit more space there, cubes. But it can't be 6a times a because we wouldn't get a difference of 1 from 12s and so on. So it must be 3a squared and 2a. It could be the 2 there or it'd have a common factor and there's no common factors there. So it must be 2 and 1. And with a minus overall it must be minus the 4 plus the 3. From the early, earlier part, there is a difference there, but it would involve um, cube roots of 3 and so on, so I'll just leave that alone. D. Part D. x to the 2n plus 5x to the n plus 6. Still a quadratic, because I've got the even powers. <coughs> this time it's a quadratic in x to the n and a constant. So it's just going to be x to the n times x to the n. And then the 1 and the 6, that must be 2 and 3, so that gives me plus 2, plus 3. Now, when it comes to part E, it becomes a little bit more sophisticated. In part E, I've got x to the 4 plus x squared plus 1. <coughs> so initially you think, right, that's a quadratic in x squared and a constant, but 1s aren't going to produce a 1 in the middle. This is a case where you'd have to start going through that algebraic technique of introducing convenient terms and then correcting by amending them. That would be handy because a 1 and a 1 would make a 2 if that said 2. So you just do that. Make that 2x squared plus 1, knowing that that will factorise, and then amend that by subtracting the extra term x squared. Now this will factorise quite nicely into x squared plus 1, all squared, minus the x squared. And I've now got the difference of two squares. So that would be x squared plus 1 plus the x, x squared plus 1 minus the x, or rearranging them into well-known phrases, x squared plus x plus 1, x squared boop, boop, minus x plus 1. There's a room to put f in here. Well, I'll just clear the board. I just had to clear the board because I'm not sure that last part showed through there. So same with this one, factorising that, <coughs> nine, 9 and 1, 3 and 3, they're not going to produce a 2, that's not going to factorise directly as a quadratic and x squared and a constant. So for this one again, use that technique of introduce a term. If that was x to the 4 and that was 9, and notice there is a similarity with completing the square, well I'm not completing the square by amending the end term, I'm completing the square by amending the middle term. With an x squared all squared and a 3, a 6 would be perfect in the middle. So I can do that, just put in a 6 and amend for it by removing 
the 4x squared, so I've still got the original value. Now I've got x squared plus 3 all squared. 9 and then twice the product 6 minus 4x squared, which is again the difference of two squares. So I'm going to have that, take away that, and that plus that, or the other way around. So I've got x squared, that being the square of 2x. So I've got x squared plus 2x plus 3 times x squared minus 2x plus 3. 3 will produce a 2, because it'll be 3 and 1, or minus 3 and minus 1. Same here, so that's as far as it goes. G. Slightly trickier, here's G. 4r to the 4 plus 3r squared plus 9. Won't factorise directly into just a neat quadratic <coughs> of linear terms. Well, with squares. So for this one, same principle as before. That would be 2r squared, that would be 3. 2 3s are 6. It'd be handy if it was a 12 in the middle. So if I do that, if I just put in 12r squared in the middle, and then correct for that by taking away 9r squared. I've now got a completed square for this part. Again, same technique as completing the square, only not completing it for the end term, but completing it for the middle term. So for this part, I'm going to have there 2r squared plus 3. That's correct. Square the first, square the last, in the middle, twice the product, minus 9r squared, which again is the difference of two squares. So it's going to be this, take away that, and this, plus that. I think I'll put it the other way around. So I've got 2r squared, that being the square of 3r, plus 3r plus 3, times 2r squared, minus 3r, plus 3.